He's a hockey insider. We're getting closer to the trade deadline, and we're, we're, we're seeking uh, COVID scoops. But here he is, our TSN hockey insider, Darren Dreger. Do you ever think you'd be in this position, Dregs? No, no, obviously not. I mean, this is just unfortunate uh, as an understatement. And, and, you know, as much as, uh, you know, you're always interested in how things are shaken down team by team in the National Hockey League, uh, I also think it's important to make sure that the information is on point and specific to the Vancouver Canucks. There's been a lot of misinformation that has been supplied by both the province of B.C., um, and indirectly and by the National Hockey League. And, and it's, it's not on purpose by the NHL. It's just sticking to protocol, which is identifying the main roster players. So their numbers have always been lower than the numbers that I've reported <laughs> through the process in the last week plus, right? But in my mind, you know what? The taxi squad players, they count. You know, the coaches count. The support staff member who tested positive, that person counts. So I think that's why the Vancouver Canucks came out as honestly and as transparent as they did today, divulging the full numbers and acknowledging, uh, despite the fact that the province yesterday said that there was no uh, identification of a variant, the Canucks came out and said, yeah, there has been. It, you know, it's been confirmed that you know, a number of, of individuals associated with the Canucks have been infected by the P1 variant, and the NHL has confirmed that. So, again, for me, it's more about making sure that the information stays on point and remains accurate. Darren, is there a chance that some of the Canucks players, like, can just say, like, don't even think about asking me to return this season? Like, is that could that be out there? Or just thinking about this thing unfolding, coming back, yeah. to even think about playing, it's it just seems like a long shot. Well, you know what, I don't know how it can't be considered for individual players. And it depends on the situation. Like, I, I'm not just talking about their own health. I mean, you know, the good news is that the majority of the players, my understanding is that they're coming out the other side. But the bigger picture is how it's impacted families. You know, you've got uh, wives, apparently, who are now testing positive. Um, you've got kids who are testing positive so the larger family of the vancouver canucks uh, now appreciably are being impacted by this so if you're you know a young father and your family is now struggling with it because you brought it home because of what happened in a practice or however they contracted this i mean mentally that's got to take an enormous toll and as i as i reported uh, in my NBC segment tonight, and then I tweeted after the fact, you know, the NHL is looking at as early as, I think, next Friday, April 16th, as a return date for the Vancouver Canucks. And I'm not talking about stepping back on the ice and slowly getting reconditioned. Game on the 16th of April. I, I, I mean, I don't know how that's possible. I don't know how that's possible to the point that you've made here, Jeff, but We'll see. I can appreciate logistically why the NHL wants to get the ball rolling. They're very, very sensitive to everything I've just said, uh, specifically the players, the coaches, to the family members. But logistically, they do have to pay attention to what's going on around the North Division, and they want to make sure that the Vancouver Canucks get in 56 games. But this is good. physically and mentally, I, I can't imagine the challenge that these young guys are going to have to face in their families. So, Dregs, what's the level of stress in, in the front office of the Toronto Maple Leafs at a moment like this? You know, not, not information, but just speculation yeah. from your end, knowing what you know about how teams have dealt with this, with the news that, you know, William Nylander is not going to play tonight for precautionary reasons because he's had a close contact with someone outside the team that has COVID, but was at the morning skate today. I mean, how, how much of a shock of fear does that send through Kyle Dubas at this point? Well, it has to. There's no doubt about that. And look... You know, do we know with certainty that what has happened in Vancouver can't happen in Toronto? Obviously, we don't. We can't know that. Uh, I suppose you could look at the Montreal situation and how that was contained, and, and there is the upside. Um, now, there's some process work that has to get done with the Toronto Maple Leafs and William Nylander. Now, number one, we don't know, again, absolutely rock-solid certain that the person that William Nylander was in close contact with has actually tested positive. That hasn't been determined yet. So um, 
what if it's a false positive? Uh, so right. they, they need to get through that process first. Willie, you know, I mean, players are tested on a daily basis. You know, if if the person that may test may have tested positive actually is positive and Nylander is close contact, then he remains in protocol until he's cleared. But, you know, that might take a few tests, whatever that specific number of tests is before he can get back into the group. That that could be best case scenario. Best case scenario is the person that may have tested positive doesn't test positive, and William Nylander also tests negative, and then they go about their business. So that might right. take a day or two to figure out. With Darren Drager, a TSN Hockey Insider. So the Habs are in town tonight, and they're they're going to be a playoff team. They're aware yeah. of that. But Bergevin's done a lot of heavy lifting. During the offseason, he made a lot of moves, and he, yeah. he just acquired Eric Stoll. So – from that standpoint, I, I'm not bracing on them being overly active, but should I be between now and Monday? Could the Habs actually dip their toe in here? Well, they could because you're right. It's Mark Bergevin, and he's as crafty as they come, and he never shows his hand. And it doesn't matter with you know people he trusts in the media or the, the greater media when he has his availability. It's almost like a game for Berge, right? Uh, let's just, you know, let's let's give them a little bit, but we're not giving them more than that. And, you know, then there's trickery involved, and I think he actually considers it a bit of sport to knock us off the trail. Um, but he, he does have cap space to work with now that Brendan Gallagher is out for the rest of the season, the regular season anyway, six-week uh, broken thumb injury. Um, so he's got approximately $3.75 million in LTI room that he could use to exceed their salary cap. Um, but it doesn't sound like he's going to do that. It sounds like he's he's more inclined to just use that as the, the cap wiggle room that he may have had to create before uh, Monday if Gallagher had stayed healthy. He's got Armia coming back. He's got Cole Caulfield waiting in the wings to make his NHL debut. So they, they might just stand pat with what they've got up front internally. Uh, but again, I'm always careful to qualify. It is Mark Bergevin. And if something lands on his plate that's of interest and he can make it work between now and the deadline, then absolutely he can do that as well. Darren, Freddie Anderson, the more he has ex body examined or reevaluated, does yeah. that mean the likelihood of – I've said last week, I'm like, I'm not going after a goaltender. But with right. the uncertainty and with Campbell – the uncertainty in him playing a bunch of games, is it more likely that they are looking at a goaltender at the deadline? Well, they say they're not. Um, but, you know, is that, again, is that rock solid? Uh, if if a piece – and then who exactly could we be talking about here? You know, we believe that Dave Riddick to the Calgary Flames is a piece that, that is uh, potentially available. Um, you've got Dubnik. You've got, you know, some other, you know, somewhat interesting pieces that, if nothing else – could improve the third goalie situation for the Toronto Maple Leafs, but every time I check in on it, it's not how Freddie is progressing. Freddie is progressing. You know, historically speaking, and this dates back to, to Freddie with the Anaheim Ducks, he's been a player who needs to feel as close to 100% to do his job, and that's not a knock on Freddie. That's just how he needs to feel, and he wasn't 100%. That's been acknowledged, so maybe they saw enough in his game eroding that they felt like the lower body injury, it's best to deal with it now. So if it takes a little bit longer than everybody is comfortable with to get him 100% healthy, then that's, that's money well, or that's time well spent. So until that changes, and as of today, I was told their position on it hasn't changed, then I don't think that they see uh, adding a goaltender or improving their depth in that position as a priority. They're, they're still focused on trying to land the right fit top six forward. So we'll see if Dubas changes between now and Monday. Well, that's an interesting one, Dregs. When you look at the way Galchenyuk has fit into that unit with Nylander and Tavares, uh, it's been, you know, competent, maybe not, maybe not elite, but do you actually yeah. think there's someone on the market that they could, you know, feasibly land that, that is an upgrade from Galchenyuk? Well, we've talked about it uh, on varying platforms at TSN the last number of days. You know, I'm sure that Dubas has checked in on the New Jersey Devils and Kyle, Palm, uh, Kyle Palmieri. Um, you know, we wondered in a quiz earlier this week if Nick Foligno from the Columbus Blue Jackets might be a good fit. 
you know, I, I'm sure that Dubas has been on top of uh, a bunch of different forwards. Uh, Ricard Raquel from the Anaheim Ducks is another one that could make some sense. Um, you know, it just, again, it, it, it all depends on where the sellers are positioning and when they position themselves as sellers. I, I talked to a number of GMs today, guys, and aside from the names that are obvious that we know are out there, Palmieri, Taylor Hall, um, you know, it's it's a bit of a crapshoot as to, you know, the, the willingness of the general managers to, to part with, you know, key pieces. And Ricard Raquel would be one of those with the Anaheim Ducks. Josh Manson is another one. There's lots of teams that would like Josh Manson, including the Winnipeg Jets. Bob Murray hasn't decided yet if he's willing to part with either one of those players. So until the, the sellers define with certainty that they are a seller, then... You know, the buyers like Kyle Dubas are kind of stuck in the mud waiting. I, I don't think the right fit is out there yet. I, I just don't. And Or if, they, if Toronto thinks it's Kyle Palmieri or they think it's Nick Foligno, Toronto just hasn't paid the price that those two teams would want or need to, to make the transaction happen sooner than before the bed, uh, right. deadline. Well, that's what that's what would likely be happening here. I mean, yeah. there's only so many yeah. teams willing to sell and only so many quality players – of substance that you really are willing to pay for, like a premium for, right. at least they're not going to be alone in that, right? There's so many teams that no. be kicking tires. No, and he, you know, even on Taylor Hall today, guys, I got the sense uh, this morning that there was a, a chance that Taylor Hall could be moved today, just based on the dialogue that Kevin Adams is having with teams. You know, I believe the Islanders, the Bruins are in that mix, maybe another team or two that have entered in the last little bit here. Um, but then it, it, it kind of settles down. It's the calm before the storm because, as I just said, maybe other teams enter the equation. Maybe one team decides that, okay, well, we're more willing now to pay a price than we were yesterday, you know, because they don't want to lose that player to the Islanders or the Islanders don't want to lose them to the Bruins or wherever Taylor Hall ends up, we'll find out. But that's the type of strategy that happens when you're creeping close to the deadline as we now are. Well, we'll see. We are getting a lot closer, and uh, we get the Masters start tomorrow. And uh, you're, you're the middleman. O sh- O sets up with uh, you know different gear and this this yeah. sweatshirt. And I had to stop by the house and pick it up today. Yeah, I appreciate yeah. that. And yeah. it's a beautiful sweater. I mean, you've seen the hoodie. It's it's I a mean, thing it's, of beauty. It's it's outstanding. You know, <laughs> what's the commercial with uh, George? from uh, Seinfeld. Well, oh, it's the, Tide or something, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Just, uh, <laughs> that's, that's exactly what it reminded me of when I first saw it. George's face on his hoodie, man. That thing is going to live forever. That's such a good point. Imagine driving down Young Street. Like Greg Norman's <laughs> driving down Young, and he sees the two of us walking by with this hoodie on. <laughs> He'd be mortified. Dude, yeah. There's an epic picture of Tiger Woods at a golf tournament because people started making T-shirts of Tiger Woods with his prison shot on the, like, oh, just no. his face of the prison shot. Yeah. And a guy got a picture going thumbs up, and Tiger was behind him and saw him, and he's just oh. laughing. Like, yeah. what are you going to do? What, at what that are you going to do? <laughs> yeah, and the same thing with Greg Norman. Well, although he can exactly. beat the hell out of both of us. He's still a pretty good oh, yeah. But what are you going to do? He's a well-put-together dude, apparently. That's whatever oh, he keeps saying. Oh, if I'm Greg Norman, I have my own hoodie walking on the beach. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> a shot of yourself on the beach from a specific angle. Uh, <laughs> Every day I'd wear it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> tattoo material potentially yes anyway oh, wow. all right Drex. it's a busy time of year we appreciate it we'll do it again soon all right guys on that note have a good night